Hello and welcome to the Sherlock Show. I'm Georgie Courage Cole and with me on the sofa today are Lou Huff, Rebecca Hull and Tamara Corrin. Plus later on I'll be joined by very special guest Alessandra Steiner. Alex is a former beauty journalist renowned in her role as beauty editor of Glamour and she's now one of the UK's leading experts on the subject with the Instagram following to prove it. So we've got a bit of a beauty special for you today. Alex will be talking us through her beauty heroes and later in the show on your behalf I'll be asking her all the questions you sent in. But first, according to a new survey of over 1,500 men, more than half of them prefer their best friend to their wife or partner. Hmm, what do you think? Outrageous. I mean, it is outrageous. (laughs) I I just think, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the men in my family maybe wouldn't say that. I think it's relevant that they have their best friends. But like you said earlier, I think I'm... Great person to be around. Yeah, so. me too. I think, it's, yeah, I think it's quite shocking. Yeah, me too. Also, I feel like my husband in particular, he's got you know a handful of friends. Like, is that is that all you need? Is that yeah. you know really, really? I'm also surprised though because so many. I don't know about the men in your lives. But so many men are a bit crap at making yes. plans. You know, if yeah. I wasn't around, my husband would kind of do nothing. He just he's like, what are we doing this weekend? I'm yeah. like, oh oh. Yeah. So you expect me to make all the plans? Yeah. No, I wonder we... if it's one of those things where like they think they should say, oh yeah, it's the guy, but actually like we know the truth. Yeah. So yeah, apparently though, um, following this study, 38 percent of them said they see their best friends three times a week. Would you no say that way. about your other half? No, no way. Definitely. But only they they can't have. Proper jobs, then. Anyway, twenty-seven percent claim they'd like to see their friends even more often if the stresses and strains of modern life didn't get in the way. I do sometimes say to my husband, "Come on, pick up the phone yeah. and just—they they don't ring up their friends I, and chat no. like we do. But I think when they do, they really enjoy it. But sometimes yeah. I'm like, pick up the phone, ask them how they are. Um, I think it's just um, you know, male, female, male, yeah, correct. Yeah, I think it's totally, totally Definitely. different how we. Are with friends and also communicating I think men are totally different yeah. it's not it's not on their radar mm. and it's probably an age thing I guess at different stages of your life yeah. whether like you know what you're focusing on mm. at that point so what it does it say what age group they are no it doesn't say what age mm. group mm. I also think single men are better aren't they you know when they have yeah. a long-term other half in their lives they just kind of as I said rely on you to organize their social life <laughs> to do the planning yeah. yeah completely I think there's something in that though I think there is something in modern day stresses because I'm guilty of it as well so I'm assuming as we said, if men are bad at planning, then they're just as guilty of getting out there. And are you? Do people. you make a real conscious effort to book in with your girlfriends? Are you those kind of people who see? I've got some friends who you see them, and then the next day they say it was great to see you. Let's put another date yeah. in. Mm. I was kind of struggling That's getting my much. head around that, but yeah. it's yeah. a good, yeah. it's a good, it's a good thing to do. Do you know what I didn't used to? But I have a friend who's going to get a little shout out, Lydia, who's so good for that. She takes her calendar to everything, like her diary, and it is. It's re- I've started doing it now because otherwise you just go months. Yeah, months. yeah you do. Yeah. It's We're good every it. couple of months. Put a date in. I think so because otherwise it's so easy to get booked up, and then the closer you get to it, then people are like they've already got other plans, yeah. and then and like I'm not very good at doing like three nights in a row is too much. Like, I need to have, like... Yeah, I'll, like, no, I get that. Like, I mean, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm not at home at all. So, yeah. so um, yeah, but I think it's really... Like, I always really like doing different things with different girlfriends. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's so nice. But it is, it's forward planning. Yeah. Because just the weeks go past and what yeah. was work and everything else. Yeah. Is and I, lo- I do love seeing girlfriends, but there is, there is kind of nothing nicer than just having a quiet night at home. Oh, with absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, well, on the subject of men talking about men lots today um we're going to talk about cheating i don't know how i feel about this anyway (laughs) apparently it's becoming increasingly difficult to constitute what cheating is Um, i mean new data has revealed that women see it very differently to men i think there's a real kind of emotional and physical thing here isn't there um a third of women believe that if you're on a break, sorry, I'm just trying to get my head around this. A third of women think that if you're on a break and you have sex with someone else, it doesn't count as cheating. I'm, I like cannot get my head around that. I, I just don't believe that, and I'm surprised that it's the, like the women that don't think this is cheating. Yeah. Like I would have thought men would maybe be more. You think it is cheating? No, it's not. It, no, it's not cheating. No, no you're it's on a not. break. You can do what you like. I was going to say that. That is. What it, no, I guess it's, where, where's this research? Oh wait, no, from? no, I'm not sure. I think that. Oh, oh really? really? You think if you're on a break, I don't know. I think you can't depends. see anybody else? It depends else. how long you've been together and what the break means. If it's like, we just need okay. a bit of time, I don't well, know. Well, that's, that's a different kind of break. I get, yeah. I get that. But I think if you're on a proper break, 
I think Anything you need to break. Yeah. Fair game. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I don't really believe in a break. I think you either break up. Yeah, I do agree I with that. I think if you've broken up, fine. If you're... Break up, so a break, I think it seems like you're going to get back together. Yeah. Oh, to me, a break means you're breaking up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does kissing someone else count as cheating? 30% of women don't believe kissing is cheating. Definitely, yeah. I mean, what? it definitely yeah, is. Of course it is. If Harry came yeah. back and said, I've kissed someone, I'd be like, see, yeah. out. out. Yeah. Out. As is sharing a bed with someone else. Apparently, only 20% of men think sharing a bed with another woman is cheating. Sharing a bed and nothing happening. Oh, no. no. Sharing a bed sharing is not bed. okay. Yeah, I don't think sharing a bed is What do you think, Lou? No. <laughs> 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 no comment. I think any physical I agree. connection yeah. is cheating. But if you're on a break, it's not cheating. Yeah. yeah. I, I totally think, agree. I also think you have to think, if, the, if your partner or uh, was doing that with somebody else, how would you feel? If you know it's not right, then obviously it's not right. Mm, yeah, but yeah. I don't think a break. Yeah. My husband and I had a break. We had a seven-month break after a couple of years and I remember we split up and he said if it's it, it, what did he say if you love something enough let it run free god this is really cheesy <laughs> it will come back to you if it's meant to be and actually it is so true yeah. but if you're gonna try it if you're gonna try and be a part and see what happens and see if you're meant to be you've yeah. got to probably try it he's got to do it yeah anyway. um how do you feel about close relation close relationships emotions with another woman is that cheating? How do you feel about that to me? <gasps> that makes me feel sick. I think it's... Intimate well, it be, conversations going on. It could be friendship, though. Mm. It could be, like, a, if they've been, you know, friends for, for years or, yeah. you yeah. know, since they were young, then that's that, I think, is absolutely fine. I think I mean, that's a hard take one. That away. Yeah, hard one I think call. if you know the other person as well, like I've got a lot of really close male friends, but my boyfriend also is really good friends with them exactly. as well, and he knows exactly what the relationship is and it's like they're my brothers mm. so there's no jealousy there because he's completely yeah. part of that relationship as well yeah. I think if if you're kind of ostracised a bit from it then that's weird if you can't be part of that yes. friendship that's mm. when I think that's sneaky we've talked about this before whether men and women can be friends when you're in a serious relationship yeah. and actually I agree if there's like real history yeah. like they've been a friend for years or before or something maybe that's different as long as yeah. it's appropriate I think if your other half suddenly had a friendship with a woman yeah. that was new yeah. and they were suddenly hanging out together and messaging each other or whatever. Ooh, I, I find that... Yeah, that's, that's, that's different, okay. isn't it? That's suddenly like, oh, what are you doing? I think it's also a security <laughs> thing, how secure you feel in yourself yeah. and yeah, you definitely. in the relationship as mm. well. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that makes a big difference. Um, apparently only a third of women would leave a cheating partner. God, I, I mean, I guess fine. it depends on the circ... I mean, I'm not agreeing with it, but I guess it depends on the circumstances and things come into play. Like, if you've got kids, I, how long you've been together. I mean, I personally wouldn't stay with somebody, but I can see why somebody maybe would if they were, had a family and they were trying yeah. to keep it together. Mm. So, again, I guess it depends on circumstances. Yeah, I Tomorrow? Would, no, absolutely no. not. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. No, no, no way. You're off. Yeah. I think, mm. I'm, I, think I just... It would... I wouldn't be able to get over it. Yeah. I'd, I think I'd hold such a grudge Completely. that yeah. any yeah. argument, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd bring it up. Yeah. I remember someone saying to me, as I've said this before on the podcast, I remember someone saying to me as a child, if a man made a really, really stupid mistake and they were the father of your children and you'd had this, you know, you had the happy life, and yeah. just a, would, you, would you ruin your whole family mm. just for one stupid mistake? And I've always really, mm. I remember yeah. where I was, I was quite young. And I remember that conversation really vividly, but I still, I yeah. mean, I'd be like, no, I'd cut your trousers up. <laughs> cut up your balls. <laughs> and and out <laughs> you out the door. Uh, anyway, it's quite a deep conversation. <laughs> Isn't it? Let's change the subject. Let's talk about something far more lighthearted. Let's talk about entertaining. Um, because we had a great piece on the site last week about how to throw a modern dinner party. Now, I think the rules of entertaining have changed quite a lot. From, I remember as a child, my mum entertaining and like panic and, you know, laying the table two days before and, you know, all the prep that went into it. I think we're a bit more relaxed these days. Um, Tamara, I know you're, you're a big entertainer. Yeah. Um, what do you think the secret is to a modern, a successful modern dinner party? I mean, I love entertaining. I would, <clears throat> excuse me, I would... I just think make it easy for yourself. You want to enjoy it as well. Having lots of people over can be really stressful, but can also be really lovely. It depends how relaxed you feel. Yeah. I think it sets the vibe. Um, 
And also cheats. You know, you don't need to be cooking everything yourself. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Yeah. Cheat. I mean, m and is there to, for cheating. Um, so I would I'd also be very aware of what people like, um, allergies, or, you know, just make sure you've got other dishes as well. I remember my mum once being around when I was ringing someone up or something about, did, is there, was there anything they didn't eat? She was like, I can't believe you're ringing people up to ask them. And I was like, but in this day and age, yeah. Yeah, you have everyone's to. You have to. There's vegan, yeah. pescatarian, you know, yeah. everyone. Yeah. I had a dinner party once and this girl turned up and I didn't ask. This promise you was a true story and I'd done fish pie. Yeah. And I had to make a bowl of pasta and there were, yeah. there were quite a lot of us. It wasn't just four. Yeah. And I was suddenly boiling pasta in the middle of supper and oh. I hadn't checked. So I think you kind of and do how need to check these days. And did she tell you? Because like, I'm vegetarian and um, I often, like previously I used to find it really difficult actually going for dinner at people's houses because you just feel really awkward. Yeah. Because you want to do something that's easy for them to do and don't want them to have to go to the faff of like making something different for you and all of those things. So I always felt a bit awkward so it's really nice when somebody asks you yes. so like if you like you're checking but if you aren't and then you arrive and you're like oh do I say something I don't know, know. Like, that I actually, in Notting Hill when she says yeah. I'm a pescatarian like <laughs> the best guinea <laughs> fowl I've is ever had just, just to, is it not better just if someone asks you they just say I'd so love to come sorry to sound really fussy but I'm I'm a vegan I yeah 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 I think, yeah. You, know, yeah. Totally I think you, yeah. Yeah. I, you just have to say it from the offset and people are like it's fine no worries but like, this girl I was putting the food on the plates and she just said she's Oh, oh shit! Yeah. I should have remembered that, and I actually did know, but I'd completely forgotten. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think as well. I think a hostess or a host would rather know that yeah, information. Completely. I think it's actually more awkward, you know, for them not to know. And then yes. it happens actually like, that's at the annoying. table. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Completely, yeah. Completely, completely. Yeah. But someone's saying, "Is there anything you don't eat?" Oh, well, my husband mm. actually hates mushroom. He's really the only things he won't eat are blue cheese. Hate blue cheese as well. Blue cheese and mushrooms. Yeah. And we went to dinner once and she, and she asked me and I said no. And then we got there and she'd made mushroom <laughs> stroganoff or something like that. It was like vegetarian beef stroganoff with mushroom yeah. in my husband's face. It's like, oh, oh my God. God. And he couldn't even pick them out and he was like oh. retching at the table. Oh, so. no. Maybe if you really, if someone asks. Yeah. Anyway, um, other things um, on the list were, yeah, don't overcomplicate things. You know, you don't need to cook a pudding, do you? I think a mini magnum goes a long yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, we it's always so have mini magnum. Do you? Yeah. yeah. There's also, there's a place on Northcote Road called, um, I'm going to say it wrong, Omervelia something. Anyway, they do amazing oh. meringues. And oh. we had a dinner party the other day. And um, I bought set, like some of those big yeah. meringues. And they went down a storm. Just added a few little raspberries on the plate, yeah. a sprinkle of icing yeah. sugar. And they're pretty. Mm. Also, Gorgeous. brownies or just a bowl of Maltesers. Yeah. 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 If you made a starter in the main course, yeah. you yeah. can be let off for pudding. Also, yeah. sharing platters. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I think it's just way more relaxed. Becky, any tips for entertaining? No, but I did, because I haven't entertained as much until I get a proper flat with Harry. But I did notice on there that um, you shouldn't let people get in your kitchen and sort of <sighs> interfere. Yeah. And that... I mean, A, because it's polite to be like, get out of the way, and B, because it's just bloody stressful yeah, when people come in and like, yeah. what can I do? I so just away from my yeah. kitchen. Yeah. And, yeah, and that just saves you hassle all round. I'm uh, actually very bad about clearing up when people are there, and I know that was on the list. Oh, Me too. Really? I'm yeah, terrible. Because it's basically I'm, saying, like, it's time to go now. Yeah. Like, you have to I'm, wait until then. It there. is, and it isn't. For me, it's just that like, I just need to clear, I just need my kitchen back to where it was yeah, before. I know. I'm terrible. I, I'm the same. My husband's worse than me. He is terrible, and he's probably washing up. And I'm like, where do you stop? <laughs> I want to be washing up with him, yeah. but I know, yeah. like, my dad, if you start clearing up, he's, he's like, oh, do you want us to go? And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I've got such an OCD about mess yeah. Yeah. that I'm longing to do it, but you should should you I'm it's awful no, no. awful anyway uh, I think that's it but don't go away because after a quick break Alex will be here sharing her beauty must-haves good morning Trini how are you good morning Rich how are you very good very well you. where this am way. I going this this way, this way. Way. <laughs> How are you? Very well, how are nice you? Love this bag. Rejuva Radiance, phenomenal marine collagen, phenomenal new balm gel. My favourite, really. Very, very good dupe for skin SkinCeutical. Vitamin C, 23%, I think. Korean essence called Claire's. Romilly Wild Supercell Serum. EFFI. Under eye is the killer. SPF. Where are we going now? Zara, Duke of York Square. They're doing a haul on the show on Thursday. 
Holly and I are going to do a little scoot around the store. See if we can pick out some of the best yeah. bits of the show. Exactly. How many things have you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I've been quite restrained. How many pieces have you got, Lou? Fifteen. So you've got 25 pieces. Yeah. That, that's really nice. Coat a good nose. Nice little wedding guest dress. Holiday dress. And then just a cute little bag. Oh, so much good stuff. Yeah, let's really? pledge our bets. How much is it going to be? I'm going to say 739. 739, that's what you're going for. What are you saying? 620. I'm going to say 740. What are we doing now? SL Man. What is SL Man? What's SL Man? Yeah. Clues in the name, Rich. I know. SL Man is Sherlock's for Men. Where is it? It's coming, it's coming. We're constantly asked, why isn't there a male version for my husband, brother, my boyfriend? We're going to bring it to them. Specialised said it's for men, grooming, fashion, technology, fitness. What stage are we at? Design. Is that about, stage one? No, it's quite far down the line. Got all the developers lined up. We need to completely finalise design, brief in, web agencies. An award-winning beauty journalist and long-time beauty director of Glamour magazine, Alessandra Siner, is one of the UK's most revered authorities on all things beauty. So, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Big excitement to have you here today. Um, Alex went upstairs and one of the girls went, oh my God, I use her products, they're so good. <laughs> I love hearing that though, I have to say, like, that is... Honestly, like that made that made my day. Oh, it really good. did. It does. But I did look at her skin and think, oh my god, her skin is rich. She's actually she's very young, but okay. her skin good. I'm glad. Good. I, I do love it when I go in store and girls come up to me and they have great skin. I'm like, you're a great advocate for my skincare. So <laughs> no, talking. thank you. Okay, well look, we've got some of your favorite products here. There are a few missing. We've got the hopefully the images will come on screen. So we're going to go through my list. Um, first of all, we've got the micellar cleanser. Yes, the Garnier. <laughs> Uh, it's just such a classic, you know, I mean, um, I, I, when I wear makeup, I do double cleanse, but I need it to be fast. And I think my sellers, I've, I've been using this Garnier one forever, like for so long. And I, and it is absolutely constant. I have it, I buy the, they have little travel ones mm -hmm. as well. So it's practical and it takes everything off. And I think especially, you know, I have quite sensitive eyes. And I sometimes struggle with eye makeup removers because they can go, you know, the dual phase ones can go in your eyes and make yes. them a bit kind of. Yes. And so this one is just so gentle. And for me, it works. And it's a good price. So I so like you, that. So you use that to take your makeup off and then yes. do double cleanse and then off I, that? Yeah. So like a day like today where I'm with you and I'm filming, I, I don't wear makeup every day. I'm someone who likes not to wear makeup. Do not. I, I prefer not to. I prefer okay. myself without. Um, okay. But you know, that's my thing. I've always been a skin girl. But, um, but on days like today, obviously when I'm working and filming, so I will remove my makeup with this and then I'll do like a second, you know, like a foam wash or something okay. with, with water. But this, but you know, in a pinch, this might, this is enough, you know? The one thing with micellars is some people, if you're sensitive, you do need to rinse it. I think sometimes people think you just right? use it on a cotton pad. Yeah, because at the end of the day, there's still it's you know, a, a makeup, it's a remover. There's, yeah. you know, so you do, if people are sensitive, sometimes they're like, oh, I can't take it. It's because, you know, you do need to rinse it. Okay, good tip, good tip. <laughs> okay, so the next one we have is the moisturizing cream. <laughs> I mean, we're going from like cream. high to low, <laughs> low to high. Yeah, but high low is, is kind of like my whole philosophy anyway, you know? I mean, that's, that's kind of what I, on my channels, and for sure at, at Glamour for like all those years that I was there, it was always very much the ethos of the magazine to, to mix the high and the low, mm, because at mm. the end of the day, it's about products that work. Yeah. And I love La Mer, I do. I mean, I've been using the, mo this is the original, the really thick one. Uh, I've been using this for years. And, you know, look, not every skin needs a moisturizer, for sure. But I have dry, a little bit dehydrated and dry skin. Me too, me too. This is a dream. It is so good. It's a dream. Know. Like, yeah. you know, even, um, you know, when I fly, I almost put it on like a mask. I know that sounds really indulgent, but, you know, in our jobs, you know, what, our skin is our job. So for me, this is an investment purchase that I love. In the summer, I do tend to wear the soft cream yes. when it gets hot. Oh, the mattifying one in the, the that's really yeah, nice. Yeah, a lot isn't of makeup it? artists love that. Oh, do they? Yeah, because if you don't have tremendously oily skin, but you have a bit of oil that comes through in, in the summer, especially, it'll just keep that yeah. down. Yeah. So your skin will still be dewy without being shiny because yeah. there is that thing isn't there like yes you all want to be glowy and dewy but we don't want we don't to be like sweating an dewy yeah. no exactly so can you show me i think what would be how much of this product 
should you use? Because this is expensive stuff. Okay. Like, so show me how much should we be I using mean, about. I mean, obviously, like, you'd use a spatula because I think that's the one thing, like, I, I don't love putting my fingers in pots because I think of the cross-contamination, but for the purposes. So for the purposes I can do, like, I can use too much, okay? But normal, like, literally, it's that. And then what you do is... Okay, so that's, that's where I'm going wrong. Yeah, that's... And then you literally, you warm... The, I know people think this is like doesn't really work, but it does because this activates the cream and then the, more than activating it, it just makes it thinner, right? Yes. So you kind of do this, maybe you guys can see, until it's almost like see-through. Okay. And then you press it on. There's a way of doing it. So I've worked with Lamar as well. You're so there's a way. Of, do you know what though? I will, like what I, what I sometimes do, I really thin it down, when, especially more in the winter when I'm in air con and I'm really dry. I get it all the way down. And then I will pat it around my eyes. You know when like you get that four o'clock face where like <laughs> things start to like, especially your concealer starts to congeal yeah. and you go a bit like, whoa, I've aged about five years today. And I, I will pat it around my eyes just to kind of, okay. I hope I didn't remove it. No, you're looking <laughs> but good. But also I'm not wearing you're powder, so good. it's easy. But I um, love this. Well, good. That is a tip. So not too much. Okay. No. The next, oh, the next, well, we're talking about high to low here. Yeah. So this is... Your own range, yes. available in Primark. I did, like you did say to me, like I could have one of my products yes, and I just course. didn't want to overdo it, but I genuinely use my products. And I think, you know, if I didn't, you know, I just feel this is the whole thing that I do. You know, I mean, I'm a journalist. I've been a journalist my entire career and I mix and match. And I think, you know, I do, I use yeah. my products, but I also use La Mer. This is my favorite from my range. It's the every night eye mask. It's an, it's an eye cream like no other because my issue with a lot of eye products is they can be quite heavy uh -huh. and I tend to be puffy. And a lot of times when you put a too rich of an eye cream around your eyes, it can migrate into your eyes, even if your eyes are closed because you move, you know, you do micro movements even at night, right? You don't realize it. So product can migrate into the eye and it can make it puffy. Not for everyone, but I have a lot of puffiness. So I wanted something that's deeply hydrating, but also really light and the great okay. thing about this is it's like a gel cream you can put on your lids too okay. a lot of eye products you can't put on your lids because too heavy you're not you don't want to no. you're to around, but, but this is feel i mean this is so light you can put it on your eyelids and it's it's a blend oh, yeah, of is, hyaluronic acid chamomile willow herb and oh, it's lovely. just chill like the whole sleep spa range in my range was primark like that was the that was for me i made that because mm. i'm never i slept three hours last night you know like i never what? sleep enough yeah it's I never get enough sleep. You look, but, good. You look good on three hours. <laughs> well, we know, the, like we know the tricks, don't sleep. we? <laughs> but this product genuinely is such a great eye cream for people also who can't tolerate eye cream because you know it's cruelty-free, it's vegan-friendly, yep. no sulfates, no parabens, no essential oils, no fragrance. You know, I talk about what's not in it, but there's actually a lot of great <laughs> stuff in it. You know what I mean? Just the stuff that you want, the stuff that's proven, you know, the ingredients that we like, the hyaluronics you know, the willow herb and that kind of stuff. And four quid. I mean, get into Primark. Four pounds. It's gone amazingly well, hasn't it? Well, this one's actually price. sold out most of the time. Oh, okay. And it's usually by me because okay. I go in there and I, <laughs> people are always surprised. Like I went in last week and I was like, because my masks as well are, I, and I, all my girlfriends always ask me for my masks and this eye cream. And so literally I go in and I buy it. And there was this lady, she was like, I'm sorry, are you, are you buying You made product? this, right? And I went, yeah. And she was like, you're buying your own product. And I went, yes, because my girlfriend's, genuinely when they come to my house they they ask me for my stuff and they're and i'm like go to prom put it yourself <laughs> but no you need a word with prom so. out there <laughs> um anyway get down there get yes. down there get queuing um now we haven't got it here but we've just got to mention the hypnose mascara from longcomb love it why everyone we're always asked mascara yeah. mascara which one i mean are look, you wearing it now your lashes I, look i am long genuinely obviously i use a different mascaras you know uh -huh. I don't I think it's very rare that someone will have that one because also your lashes depending on where you are the growth cycle of your sometimes you know how sometimes your lashes are like oh my god this I look this mascara is amazing and then like next week you're like the mascara is crap it's not that the mascara is crap it's just that you're at a different cycle in your lash growth you know oh, like your yeah. hair okay it doesn't all it's not the same thickness all the time okay so different times so anyway so I do swap mascaras but the one, what I thought about with the, the edit today is the stuff that I keep going back to. Yes, exactly. Because at the end of the day, our jobs 
you know, I mean, we stuff. try products all the time, yeah, right? Yeah. So for me, it's the, what I what I brought here today is the stuff that I keep going back to over so and over. So why did you get back to that one? So I like a volumizing uh, okay. mascara. I've got length for me isn't so much what I want. I want the volume. I sometimes get lash extensions by Dixita, who is the best lady, but I, I can't always have my lash extensions in. No. It just drives me nuts after yeah, like yeah. a while, even though I think they look amazing. And I'm really, Agreed. really, really not good at doing individual lashes. Like, I just can't do it. So I need a mascara that does as close as I can get to false lashes. And That's for me, Lancome Hypnose, and also it doesn't go crunchy. Okay. And I find a lot of them go crunchy and flaky, and um, it's great. I think it's Lancome are really great at mascaras. They are generally. <laughs> uh, my mom would agree. She's using forever. Um, okay, next we've got the Radiant Fluid Foundation. Oh. How do you say this? Clé de peau. Clé de peau. Oh my god! But this isn't out yet. No. So okay. well, so I'm, you I'm, I'm, I'm impressed you got hold of it. So so yes. I know you want to. I'm keeping that. No no no. <laughs> I was looking. I was actually as you're. I was like, what shade is this? And am I going to swipe this? But it's written in Japanese, so I don't know. Um, you know what? So Clé de peau. It's part of the Shiseido group. So mm -hmm. it's a Japanese brand. Um, I've. It's launching in the UK in September. It's going to be in Harrods. I've been buying this. So you were able to purchase this in Asia and in the States. It is probably the most expensive foundation you I have just seen the price. I mean, yeah. we did do a full I mean, we said, cream. we said high low, right? 105 yeah. pounds. No, it minute. is the most expensive foundation you will and why is it so ever good then? buy in your life. But what I will say to this is that I, and remember. It's definitely my color. <laughs> <laughs> we should try it. Remember, like, for a long oh, time, nice. I, I'm, oh, it's I'm, so light. It's, that's the thing. I don't like a heavy foundation. For me to actually go out and spend this much money on a foundation means that it has to be really good, right? Because I mean, at the end of the day, my job is sampling stuff. It is the lightest texture. If you want a it dewy, is so light. Yeah, if you want a dewy, sheer wow. glow, but still that does something. So it's not one of those sheer ones where you're like, no. it's like I've got nothing on my skin. And also, obviously, Clé de Peau is an amazing skincare brand as well. So it's almost like the best skincare you can get, plus beautiful tint. The shades are wow. gorgeous. What I will say, and, I'm, and I just have to say this because I'm such a big one on shades, it's not the biggest shade selection. Okay. I think in terms of darker shades, a lot of Japanese brands aren't so great at that because obviously they, so they, they make it for the Japanese yeah, market. Yeah. So I do think they could do with having more shades. But okay. from a texture perspective, I think it is probably the best foundation in the world, but it's also very expensive. <laughs> so okay. for me, like if you have dehydrated, dry skin, dull skin, oily skin, I don't think is, it's great for. But anybody who's got more, is more on the drier side, the dull side, it's, it's, it's definitely worth the investment. And I promise you, I would go and buy the stuff, like with every, your, every, with your money. whenever. Yeah. Okay, well, a bit, a bit high, low, a bit lower, 35 pounds, tinted moisturizer, mm. Laura Mercier. Mm. I mean, God, I've used her for years and years and yeah. years. You know, this is the thing. At the end of the day, you know, we love talking. This is more my shape. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we, love, uh, we love talking about newness. Of course we do. You know, that's our jobs. You know, we inform people on what's new. But, you know, a lot of times I also want to talk about products that stand the test of time. Yeah. The classics that are just so awesome. So good, isn't it? And not everything has to be, oh, new, new, new. I mean, this, if you like a tinted moisturizer, it's also got an SPF, this one too, for going into summer. Yeah. If you, if you want that tinted moisturizer, but that does, look, I mean, it almost performs like a foundation. Mm. And I like that. It performs like a foundation, but it gives you the hydration. I think also Laura Mercier, I'm a huge fan of her makeup. I think it's all, it's beautiful also on a more mature skin. Um, I think as you get a bit older as well, I feel like you don't want to wear like the pancake heavy yeah. foundation. I Look. got my mum into this yeah. actually, and she really loves it now. Yeah. And for me, it was the foundation I started wearing Bef well, it was the product I started wearing before when I was like, yeah. can't ever wear a foundation, it's yeah. too much. Yes, but this was my it, kind of. But you know, like this would be like it. my week, my week, week work foundation, and this would be like my weekend product, but also like my date date night product. Because when you go like out, whether it's like with your husband or your boyfriend, you're going to date, you don't want to be cake. Well, no. in my opinion, I mean, I guess you know the Love Island crew would disagree <laughs> with me. But in terms of what my aesthetic is, in terms of beauty, it's about being the best version of yourself. And I just think this is another one when, you know when, like I said, I'm comfortable being naked in my skin and not Yeah, your skin but, doesn't look but, like it. I'm like some, examining your skin here. <laughs> but it really doesn't look but, caked yeah, on at but all. But sometimes, you know, I do want a bit of something. Yeah. But it's that, that, it's that product you put on when it actually does a lot but it looks like it's just you mm -hmm. and that's what I love but that's my philosophy of makeup anyway so I'm, I'm with you I'm interested you've picked two quite light 
bases there. I it's don't good. wear anything heavy no, it's good. ever. It's good to know, isn't no. it? But then, uh, look, I'm going to be honest as well. I don't need the coverage. No, you know, I mean, obviously me. there there are I mean there are higher coverage foundations that I love recommending. If anybody has for any issues, Oxygenetics is the best thing for anybody who ha who needs to cover anything. Okay. So good tip. Yes. Oxygenetics. Okay. Next mm -hmm. we have got the Luna Dew. It's cosmic. Aura Dew. Yeah, it's Aura Dew. Aura by, Dew. Yeah, the, it's called Aura Dew by um, Shiseido, and I just there's something about Japanese makeup and skincare. I just love the philosophy because it's very much about light layers. Uh -huh. So this is the shade Lunar. I also like um, Cosmic, which is more of a rose gold. Oh, that's they are, pretty. I mean, it's also, this would look great on you because it's your mm. kind of, I mean, just look, it's almost like a veil. You know, okay, you know, I get like we're getting into festival up. season and people like their glitter. I get that. But for someone who's over the age of 13, and you want a bit of that sheen, but you don't want the, look how sheer it is. It so does. Pretty, yeah, it gives it? you the sparkle, and you can use it all over the lid, or just I like it just like here on the inside to give a bit of. And the cosmic shade. So this is more of a silvery shade, which would be great on your coloring. There's another shade that's more of a rose gold, and there's a gold. I think okay. these are great all rounders, and they don't flake. That's the other thing. The problem with glitter is you put it on great. After five minutes, you look in the mirror, and it's all over. Yeah. This just like. Stays put. Stays put. And it's okay. sheer. And it's chic. It's chic. It's chic shine. Chic, chic shine. shimmer. Okay. I love it. Um, the bra I've got this in the wrong order. I hope I haven't marked things up. Oh, this is the Brow Master Bare Minerals. I mean, you are the queen of brows. <laughs> So this, like product makes it, this product um, makes it easy for me. Tell us about this one. So I'm shade coffee, and I was using that. Is this it's chestnut? But I'm shade um, coffee, and the brow master. I don't do a lot to my brows. Um, I tend to just uh, like very little actually. I just get them threaded. But this is the product that that I will use, and it's so easy because you've got a spoolie and you've got quite a thick um, kind of pencil. And what I do is, and I I brush them down. I fill them in, I brush them up, that's it. Oh, brush them down? I've done that in the, in, in the car on the up. way over. I brush them down, but my lash, uh, lashes, mm, my brows are quite long. So I will brush down, I'll fill in whatever I see that's got a gap, and then I'll brush up, and that's it. Okay, good tip. I'm obsessed. This, uh, I'm obsessed with this Brow Master by Bear. I mean, okay. just love it. Right, um, I'm conscious of time. Oh. Chanel, bronze, universe. Well, we can talk about cell. this very fast. Industry favorite. Every makeup artist worth he their brushes this. has got this. It has just one shade. People often think, oh, this is weird. Like, was it going to work for my skin tone? I mean, it works for anybody who's very fair to, I would say, someone who is a light mocha. I mean, obviously, if you're, if you're very dark skinned, you, don't, you won't need this product. But, yeah. but it's one of those that I, again, it's a classic. It's what I'm using today. I'm quite pale today. I didn't self tan on my, fa my face. I don't tend to self-tan my face as much as I used to. And, um, and I, this is how I got the glow. I literally brush all over. Easy. Amazing. Easy. And Amazing. it's just, yeah, it's that thing of when you're like, oh, I've got to go out. I look pale. I don't know what to do. Brush this on. It's fabulous. Okay. Yeah. But when you are going to tan, so you're I did using use, the So I have used water. that on my body. Okay. It's just my face. I didn't, okay. I didn't tan. And you like this one Obsessed. because... Vita Obsessed. Liberata. Okay. Literally, I, I have like, I don't, I'm not even joking. I have, I have like so many of them just in case I run out. <laughs> so it's the phenomenal. And this is actually my shade, medium. I like it. It's an organic formula, which also, um, it's very hydrating. And I think a lot of tans, because of the, the tanning agent, the DHA, can be drying on your skin. Okay. And as I have already dry skin, this is beautiful. And also it lasts and it comes off evenly. A lot of tans come off patchy. This one okay. just comes off like a real tan, like, you know, like fades. Okay. Ideal. It's beautiful. Ideal. Right. Last three products yes. are Kerastas. Chronologist. Shampoo and mask. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, obsessed. No, it's what I use. Is so this, this, this is what is, you use? Yeah, this is like a condition. I use this more as a conditioner. It says mask, but I use it as a conditioner. Uh, this shampoo is gorgeous. I have, I have not naturally uh, blonde hair. I have highlights. I love Kerastase. I'm a huge and, fan. And worth the money, Kerastase? It's I not really cheap, think so. Is it? But, but you also don't have to use. I think again, it's quantity. I think a lot of people go shampoo. Woo. Yeah. You know, it's really like with so the. So how Lemaire. much? How much are we doing? Tiny bit, like a teaspoon. Okay. I mean, per Save wash. I wash twice, but a, a little tea. It, you, you wash don't, twice, do you? Yes. Shampoos. Yeah, because I, I have quite a lot of styling products in okay. my hair. Okay. And, uh, and then the mask is great as a conditioner. But this range is, I love this range. It's very okay. gentle and uh, luxe. And finally, 
Oxytan, love this brand. I love this product. Uh, it's a body butter, but that's not sticky. And if, uh, if you do tan in the summer, it's important to keep your, I mean, as in self-tan, it's important to keep uh, your skin hydrated. What's so great about this ultra rich body cream is mm -hmm. it is so rich and it goes on so and rich. you do think, ooh, but it's not tacky. It's just gorgeous. Your skin is so soft. And this time of year when we start like, you know, when it stops raining and we start like ha. wearing skirts and stuff, you know, who's ready? Nobody's yeah. ready. Yeah. This like literally you're, you're soft and smooth. I've never had anyone complain about the feel of the skin after this, just saying. And they last forever, don't they? Yeah. Mm, well, yeah. I put a lot on, <laughs> but I love but it. But it is so rich. It's, it's a present, wonderful it? product, okay. wonderful hydrator. Amazing, thank you. I need, all, I need, I'm gonna fight you for all of this. Um, as usual, all the products will be listed below. Don't go away though. We're gonna be back answering all your questions. Now, when we announced we'd be doing a beauty Q&A with Alessandra Steiner, the questions came in in their droves. That makes me very happy. <laughs> I love answering we, beauty questions. We've got a lot to get through, so I'm going to fire it away, okay. Alex. So I'll the keep first it one was, how does Alex keep her healthy lifestyle on track with such a busy life? I don't. <laughs> you don't? No. I try, but I don't. I, when I, tr I travel all the time, the one thing I do is I do try to walk as much as I can outside, um, even though the air is not always fresh, but I try to walk and move. Uh, and you know what? No, I like to eat. I, li I, you know, I fall off the wagon all the time. Uh, my rule is, and that's why, you know, I'm also I'm a fluctuator. You know, I go up and down in weight. It's just, it's just how I am, but I enjoy my life. So what I do is, what I try is when I'm at home, in my house, I eat as clean, I hate that word, but, you know, I eat like, I'm the same. Yeah. And when I'm out, I'll have Save the fries, credits. I'll have the stuff. But no, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not good at all. I'm, I'm a disaster. So how, with that busy life, how's mm. your skin so fresh and glowing? I do. I, I have a lot of gut issues. So, okay. I mean, that's a whole other episode, but okay. I'm very careful I, that. with that. So I have a lot of, uh, I'm, I try to really look, I have the probiotics. Do I have you? the apple cider vinegar. Um, I avoid dairy as much as I can, but I love ice cream. So occasionally, you know, it's that thing of you make a choice. It's a considered mm. choice. I'm going to mm. have that ice cream. I'll have stomach cramps, okay. but dairy is not great for me, but that's me. I, I'm not. I'm never going to say to people, "Don't have dairy." Everybody is different, and yeah. that's the tr the true. Everybody's metabolism is different, but for me, dairy is no good. Um, and so I have coconut yogurt instead, but I like okay. that, so it's good. I do too. It's just even more fattening. Quick question. <laughs> Quick question. Uh, what, any probiotics you recommend? Yes, but I get them prescribed actually for my okay. doctor because I've had serious issues. Right. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, the best tinted SPF 50s. Okay, so in the fifth, so then I would go for something like HelioCare, which is an SPF yeah. 50 sunscreen. It's a hybrid, so it's a chemical and mineral. I know some people don't want that. So if you only want a mineral, uh, Alumia and uh, Alumia have a matte SPF 50, which comes in three tints. Should increase the tints, but it, at the moment comes in three tints. Alumia, I would say, are amazing, and then HelioCare. Okay, when in your skincare should you apply SPF? At the end, I mean, before your makeup. So uh, it comes right after if you use a moisturizer. But it's the one product that you sandwich in between your skincare and your makeup. Okay. Uh, what does it mean if your skin is really shiny? Does it mean you're using too many acids? 
Gosh, you know, that can be so many things. It depends, first of all, where, what kind of skin type you have and what your lifestyle is like. If your skin is too shiny, depending where. On the forehead, it could be that, but it can also be excessive oil production. Okay. So it just, it, it really depends on what you've been using and what your skin, it can be a naturally oily skin or it can be a skin that's been overly, you know, um, acidified. I'm not even sure that's a word, but usually skin that's, that's too, uh, too, many, too many acids actually goes flaky and dry. Okay. And then it can then kind of push it to go excessively oily. I mean, I'm definitely a fan of always keeping the skin in balance. So it's always about looking after that skin barrier, regardless of what your skin type is, keeping your skin in balance. I'm not against using all the actives, but it's about how you use the actives. Okay. What's the best vitamin C product? Again, it depends. What do you want? Is it for dullness? Is it for proper, like if you have real kind of uh, hyperpigmentation, honestly, I would go and see a dermatologist first to get like a proper solution. Um, if, you, if you just want my favorite vitamin Cs, uh, Alumie, again, the problem with vitamin C is, and this is so important to say, as soon as you pop open that bottle, it oxidizes. So if you use a vitamin C, you can't go chop around and mix and use other, you need to finish, you start using it and you finish it. Like Cause it goes do, off. Cause it goes off. It, as soon as you open it, it oxidizes. So okay. if your vitamin C goes very brown, dark, that's oxidized and that can actually be counterproductive. So Ooh, what you want so is something that's fresh. So something small. So Alumie, they do individual ones. Vichy have a small one. I get it. You want to buy a big bottle cause it's more cost effective, but actually it might be counterproductive. Okay. So if you're going to do it, do it properly. Um, the yeah, big question, the ultimate skincare ingredients. It, there isn't one. This is the thing. I, I get that asked a lot. There is no magic pill. You know, there is no magic product. There is no magic ingredient. Because if it was the case, I would have just released one product. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. and all the brands would have. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's for me, it's not about an ingredient. It's about the combination. It's about okay, the so the, are there any ingredients you avoid? Absolutely. Sulfates. Uh, I avoid phthalates. I avoid... I mean, those are the things you don't... Nobody should have. I don't like soap. Um, I, essential oils for me are such a potential uh, irritant. I don't like products that are overly fragranced, even though I do tolerate some fragrances. But again, everybody will have to find you know, their thing. But I don't think anybody should, should use anything that contains um, soap. Uh, so those are the sulfates, uh, the phthalates. Nobody should use excessive essential oils. Um, and I think with retinols, I think it can be an amazing ingredient, but don't feel, if your skin can't tolerate it, don't feel like, oh no, but that's the one product that I should know. You can use a copper peptide. Okay. Like there are alternatives. Yeah. I, I don't like it when people say things like, doesn't all hang on when one. They, you have, this is the one holy grail. Yeah. It's not the case. It's a great ingredient, but if your skin can't take it, don't torture yourself. Yeah. Good advice. Um, how to keep your skin so flawless and healthy. I work at it. And that's the truth. I think a lot of times people will say to me, yeah, but you have genetically good skin, Alex. I'm like, well, I ain't going to lie. You know, I, I, I have decent skin. I was born with good skin, but you can also mess something up. I do think maintenance and being regular. I, 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 am, I mean, I can count on one hand the amount of times I went to bed with my makeup on. I promise you. I yeah. don't smoke. I don't drink alcohol ever. Um, I don't go in the sun. Uh, and I'm very, very consistent with my skincare. I don't use a million, I don't use tons of products. I don't go crazy. I don't go crazy on the actives, but I'm super, super consistent and okay. super considered. Any facials you recommend? Yes, actually my friend, uh, Taryn, uh, she's the most amazing facialist. She trained under Sarah Chapman. She, uh, she set up Fefasal. Um, she's now back, she was in Austria, my my country. She was there for a while. Now she came back. She's now at Bodyism. She launched yesterday okay. in Notting Hill. She's called Taryn. Uh, her handle is Taryn Bespoke Facials. She is one of those amazing holistic therapists who will literally like customize everything to you. Okay. Uh, she's, you she's new and I think she's going to fly. Okay. Like, she's amazing. amazing. Any tips for rosacea? <sighs> It's hard. I think rosacea is tough. And if I sat here and said to you, like, here's the magic solution, I would lie to you. No, I would. If you can't afford it, go and see a dermatologist. In the meantime, the, the problem is we don't really know exactly what causes it. So I would look at your diet for sure in terms of just what can make it worse. Things like spicy foods, maybe excessive dairy. But again, it can depend. Please, please. I know. I mean, I'm looking down like it's almost like I know the temptation when you have something like that is it's so upsetting. I get it. I've had terrible inflammation with my gut issues recently. I get it. Like it's so upsetting, but don't think you have to go aggressive and gung ho. It, the point is to calm the skin That's down. It, yeah. No fragrance, cut everything out. No fragrance. Just go as gentle as you possibly can. Um, I think niacinamide 
usually people can tolerate it. Some people, they can flush with it. Um, otherwise, I would, um, I would go and see an expert because it, it needs to be approached multi, in multi, um, multi-pronged approach. I don't think it's just the outside. It's okay. also the inside. Pigmentation? Stay out of the sun. Whatever you do, you know, it, don't, don't waste your money on expensive treatments if you're going to be in the sun. You, I swear on my life, you might as well just throw the money out of the window. Yeah. So, yes, I, I think uh, lasers can help for sure. So go and see an expert. Otherwise, at home, you know, of course, a strong vitamin C can be helpful, like the ordinary does strong vitamin C. Again, your skin needs to be able to tolerate it. For other people, niacinamide. Um, but sunscreen, number one thing, sunscreen. Yeah, okay. Uh, you talked about your brows. Someone said you've got the best brows in the business. How do you shape and maintain? You said threading. So I go, th- I get, go to brush Blink them. to get them threaded, and then I brush them up because the they're we very love long. Blink. They're very long. Uh, best primers for oily skin? Oh, Laura Mercier. Um, actually, go for the one that's the, the breakout one. Even if you have, there's an oily skin one, and there's a breakout. Actually, the breakout one has the right ingredients that also works on oily skin. The best okay. one. Um, why can I suddenly see my foundation on top of my skin? Oh, my God. You know what? It happens. <laughs> I think it happens to me. It's when I layer too many products. Okay. So I think when I do too much skincare. In. Yeah, when I, because sometimes, like I said, I'm quite minimalist, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I've got time, and I just layer a lot of serums, a lot of hydration, which is nice, but you need to give it a bit of time because okay. I think otherwise the foundation will just sit on top of your skin and that's not what you want. You want to work that foundation in. Using a blender can also help, a beauty blender, because that pushes yes. stuff. Uh, yes. stuff. Do you like beauty blenders, do you? I, I used to hate them and I didn't used to use them at all, but it's because I realized I didn't know how. <laughs> I didn't know how to use them. You know, I'm a, I'm a traditional, like I like to use my fingers to apply my makeup until I, until I was taught how to actually use a beauty blender, and, uh, and it's really yeah, good. You're like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is what everyone was talking about. I had no idea. Uh, what's your holy grail product? <sighs> Other than your own range. Well, that's because I was going to say, um, I def... That's a really... That's so tough. Um, skincare, probably La Mer um, and, uh, and Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. Uh, okay. and makeup uh, that Chanel bronze universal that okay. would see me through everything and you love the YSL concealer don't you oh my god the YSL all hours concealer is the probably concealers are one of the hardest things to buy because you get disappointed so often they're never right for what you want why but is it good can, why is it so good it, it goes on like a dream it doesn't move it doesn't crease it doesn't go dry it comes in tons of shades which I commend them for because I get okay. annoyed when people don't have enough shades and do you use your finger to put it on and they have a little it's a little sponge applicator and it just blends like it like blends like nothing that product is in actually all of my makeup bags I'm obsessed okay, with that well, all hours I how it didn't arrive um, your favourite lip colour uh, looks uh, like coral someone says yeah it's, it's a Charlotte <laughs> they're watching you closely yeah it's a Charlotte it was a I know what that was it was a shooter it's a Charlotte Tilbury. Um, it's uh, ah, what's it called? It's what's what's Coachella Coral. Okay. Yeah, it's really pretty. I, I really like that. My favorite's like really pinky nude though. But when I when I want to be a bit, um, I use I'll use that. And I want to be a bit kind of cute. Okay. Coachella Coral. Um, how do you get dewy makeup coverage? Dewy makeup, but still get coverage. It's my thing. Like uh, that's what I do. I don't use powder. It's very simple. When I use powder, I will literally use it just on hot spots. Like, and I use the Fenty one by Rihanna okay. because it's very, very um, sheer, and she's done a great job because it definitely is universal. She knows what she's doing. That that that, that young lady. And uh, she's and, killing uh, it. That's what she, she's but doing. But she knows. What, but she, you can tell that she actually wears makeup. You know yeah. what I mean? She's not just going like yeah, whatever. Like you can actually tell that she's passionate about it, and I love that. You know, Isn't I. She like the most think, wealthy woman of all yeah. time. Good for her. She deserves it. She knows she's she does, done she really, does. really, really, really well. Um, best lightweight summery foundation for combination skin. For combination skin, I actually think um, the I like Double Wear Light. I'm I'm not a huge Double Wear. Well, I, I don't use it because I think it's quite heavy. But the Double Wear Light, I like. Uh, no, Double Wear Nude. I think it's called. They did so many, but I think that one's really okay. beautiful. Um, foundations for dry skin. Everything seems to highlight the dry patches. Hello, you're talking to me, um, <laughs> which, which I know I've, I know so much about that. Um, I, I oh, do you know what I like the Hourglass Vanish Stick. I think that's really okay. beautiful. Um, and uh, and I mean my Clay de Peau Radiant. I like or okay. YSL. I do like the YSL um, Touche Clair. That's okay. a beautiful light one as well. Okay. And we're nearly out of time. I'm going to whiz through these last ones. Um, what's your hairstyling routine? My hairstyling routine is wash and go. It's wash, condition, spray in some Philip B hair mist, 
literally tie my hair back in a low bun, put this behind my ears and let it dry. And then maybe whack a Dyson over it. Do you not, do you not tong the front? Oh no, this is tonged, but this is for you. Okay. Oh, every day, good, like, good. my good. every day is no us. makeup, tinted sunscreen and washing. Otherwise, okay. this, is, this is done. This is okay. tonged. This is great. Yeah, um, Better than normal, yeah. Someone's six months pregnant and my usually oily hair is now like straw. Any mm. recommendations? Mm. I mean, uh, obviously, I'm not a doctor. I think if you're pregnant, you always check with your, uh, always check with your doctor. But clearly, um, it, well, not clearly, it could be just that, you know, you're having that lovely baby inside you, which is taking all your vitamins and all the goodness of you. So maybe you might need a vitamin supplement to help. Sure. But I, I don't want to recommend something. Obviously, I'm not a, a medical professional, so. Okay. Um, bridal skincare prep oh, I for love glowing brides. skin on the big day. Brides are my favorites because they are so focused. Committed. Like a bride is like, yeah. I need to look amazing. I'm going to do everything. Everything. And that, they will stick to the I'm a marketeer's yeah. Yeah. dream. They, oh, right I now. love them <laughs> because also they're not going to like, you know what? They're not going to suddenly go, oh, uh, you know, when you start a new regime, for me, it's more like working they're gonna out. They're going to buy the clay de po. It yeah. might be, it could be double the price. It's they're great it. that clay de po for, for summer weddings. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But for brides. So how do they, how do they glow? Yeah, don't, go, don't go crazy. So don't, if you don't, the biggest tip is don't do something suddenly that you've never done before. So for example, don't have like that piece Peel, that that 50% peel that's going to literally like you don't know how your no. skin's going to react no. so don't start doing something that you don't know if you want to have a big skin overhaul do it like well before six five months before uh -huh. just to get into it uh, have regular find a facialist you like work with them work with them towards your goals but otherwise just if you want something fast vitamin c can always be kind of something quick or my my best thing that i do when i have any event that's really important whatever i have an intraceuticals oxygen facial it's amazing as a day before. Where do you get an interest? So course? many places do them. It's okay. just like an oxygen facial. Look, okay. it's not long term, but it gives you that immediate hydration and you yeah. look amazing on the I day I remember of when wedding. Bliss opened in yeah. London and everyone was going for yeah. their oxygen but it's facials. Just, but it's just one the thing to do the day before, yeah. literally. Yeah. Boom. Okay. Um, very quickly, your opinion on the Dr. Abaji... Zoskin, Zoskin. 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 Yes. Oh, Zoskin. Yeah, it's very, um, you know what? It's very active. It's very strong and very active. I think skins, people who have blemished, resistant skin, so people who don't tend to get irritation or inflammation uh -huh. or people, those people can deal very well with it. So okay. like your acne patient, love it. For me, it's strong, but I do respect it. And his no moisturizer approach, what do you think of that? You, obviously, I don't agree to that. I mean, I've actually had it out with him. We've okay. had arguments, not, not out, but disagreement. Right. Uh, look, I mean, all I can say to people when they, when they say that is like, listen, I've, I'm a big moisturizer user. I think I'm all right. You know, I'm not 22 and I'm all right. So, yeah. you know, it, again, it, of course, I'm not going to put a moisturizer on someone who's got very oily skin and big pores. Yeah. But yeah. this whole thing of don't use moisturizer, your skin's lazy. I'm like, please. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a load of rubbish to me. <laughs> Okay, finally, it wouldn't be a beauty Q&A if I didn't ask you about Botox and fillers. Yes. Someone said, any personal experience, who do you recommend? Do you use filler to get those amazing cheeks? So I'm, I'm not the biggest expert on injectables and things like that because I'm quite a needle phobic. Uh, I don't love needles because I bruise very, very quickly. Uh, I have tried Botox, but I didn't like it because I've got a very expressive face. So when I had, well, I was literally like, I cannot. <laughs> and that just doesn't work for me because I'm like that. Filler, people always ask me if my lips are filler. They ask me about my cheeks. I promise on my life, it's not. This is just, and people also ask if I had my nose done. So what I do like, that's a bit more um, invas invasive. I like profile. Low, yes. which is a needle and I'm literally going <laughs> because I'm so but uh, but because I literally I'm terrified of needles but um it's so profilo is it's not filler traditional like traditional filler it's like basically injecting really good skincare into your face but it's a bit more than just a, a, like a mesotherapy so I really like profilo I like something called ultralift which is like an ultrasound it hurt oh I can't swear on that it you hurts can, you can like swear. <laughs> it is the worst pain you will ever endure, but it's more for like a bit of tightening because I've got, I'm quite soft around here. So I like that. So I, I like the, that. I like the Profilo. Botox, look, I think the best, I mean, Dr. Seabag is, is amazing. I also think Dr. Dre is amazing. Like what I, you know, my friends are having it. There's um, a lady called Anna Marie at Dr. Seabag's who I think is a genius um, and she does my ultra, ultra lift and all that kind of stuff. But that's as far as I go. Fillers on my, it's just, no. 
I, not now. Look, listen, I'm not going to lie to people. I'm not saying never, you know, but I just think at the end of the day, you know, I don't know. I would rather look like myself. I'd, la- I'd rather be able to frown. Everybody's, and I, I don't judge people, but the one thing I will say to people, please do your research. Like yeah. if you break your knee, you're not going to go to just anybody and yeah. knock on a door. Yeah. You're going to go to a doctor in a hospital. Why are you looking at your face differently than that? Like how is your face not as important? Yeah. You know, don't scrimp. Get the best you can afford. Don't, yeah. I mean, that's the one thing I will say. I'm not anti any of it, but like, let's not have a go at people who have it done and let's not say to people, oh, you've had something done when you haven't. Like, let's just be a bit kinder, is what I would say. Quite right. It's true. Alex, thank you. We're going to have to leave it there. Really? What fun <laughs> to have you. I Come again. Yeah, Come to Thank work you. about health. Thank um, you. God, I've got so much I would love to, to talk about gut health because I think it's, it's, it's huge. And I suffer from it, so I know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, it sounds like you do. Yeah. Anyway, you know what you want with then. It comes to everything beauty. Mm, brilliant, not everything. Brilliant. I've not learned everything. so much. I'm sure all our viewers have Thank too. Thank you. Um, as always, everything featured will be listed in the notes below. That's it for today. Thank you for having um, me. Thank you so much. We'll be back on Thursday with lots more fashion and chat. In the meantime, do please like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.